Today we're going to talk about two critical buildings that unlock as you level up your castle. That includes the altar and also the star ruins. So if you are newer to War and Order and if you're wondering how these work, you are in the right place. Stick around for everything you need to know. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming and this video has been sponsored by the makers of War and Order and I want to talk to you about these two very critical buildings that unlock for you as you level up your castle. Now if you tap on your castle itself, you tap on the growth map, you can see as you progress here you are going to unlock these buildings starting at level 10 is when you will first unlock the ability to have artifacts and as you progress further you also can have constellations, and more. But let me talk now about the altar itself and what's here. There are a number of things that will be available to you as you level it up and also as you level up your castle. Those include the array, the artifact section, the conjure screen, and also the star palace. Now let's start with the array. The array is where you place artifacts. Artifacts just give you extra buffs. You're going to level these up, you're going to star these up, and I'll make a separate video talking much more in depth about the different artifacts that are available to you, which ones you should choose, and more. However, as you level up this building, the altar, uh, you get more and more slots available for artifacts, having an upwards of five, as you see here. In fact, I have the max level of this building, but at level one, you get one, level two, you get two, and so on. Now, if I make my way back to the main screen here, um, the Array is where you are selecting what is actively giving you buffs, but you can have more artifacts than you have room to place, as I have obtained over the course of my first couple weeks playing this game. Uh, you are going to want to use this screen to see kind of what you have available, and if you scroll down, you also can see your uncollected artifacts. How close are you to actually unlocking one of these things? Now, there are events that can give you access to some of these artifacts, but also, there is a screen here called Conjure. Conjure is where you go to actually spend silver and gold coins. You can see the silver coins in the normal Conjure section. The gold coins are in the mystic Conjure section to start to get some loot, including potentially some number of these artifact fragments. You'll often get other things as well, like the experience you need to level up these artifacts. The higher level your artifacts are, the more powerful their main effect is and so on. I want to point out to you that as you play the game and as you do events that give you the ability to conjure here, you're going to want to wait until you can conjure 10 times. The reason is that the amount of loot you get is higher. So uh, you get for 90 coins, 10 conjures, or you can get one conjure for 10 coins. Basically, <laughs> for 90 coins, you get one for free if you can be patient and wait. So that is true both for your normal conjure and your mystic conjure. And as you go, you get tiered rewards just for conjuring, which is kind of cool. So you can see here, once you have normal conjured, for example, 60 times, you start to get a bunch of rewards. Now, some of these rewards, like these artifact fragment chests, they're just going to show up in your pack. You're going to open them up. GG easy, okay? But the other items here, like this soul stone, and also, this is true, by the way, in the Mystic Conjure section, you see this Sacred Soul Stone. What are those used for? Well, you may have noticed at the top section of the screen, there's a Conjure section and a Shop. If we make our way over to the Shop, this is where you can start to spend those two currencies, the purple and orange stones, to just get whatever artifacts you want, as long as they happen to be in the Shop. So I can scroll down here, and I'm working on Athena's Aegis. I would like to get more of that. Um, but I don't have enough of the orange stones to get it just yet. Now, if I wanted, I could smash that refresh button all the way in the upper right. That is free five times every single day. So if you don't see what you like here, you don't have to wait forever. I'm waiting because I would really like to, hopefully by the end of the day, but probably not, be able to get that uh, Aegis fragments, those, those four fragments that are over there. I probably won't get to that. I don't think I'm going to get enough gold coins today to make that happen. However... Um, at reset every day, that's zero UTC, the items that are in here will reset and also you get your five refresh chances uh, for free 
back. There's a grand total of 20 refreshes you can do, but man, I'm not spending gems on refreshes here. No way, no how. I, I, I don't know. I'm spending in this game, but you got to be probably a bigger whale to uh, even consider that, in my opinion. So I could be spending um, these purple fragments on a couple of these items that seem pretty good here. I will just point out that sometimes you get really lucky, it seems. And I'm not entirely sure because I haven't done this long enough, but I think you can get some of the more desirable legendaries, maybe, for purple fragments. So I'm just kind of holding on to a bunch of those just to wait and see if maybe they'll show up. In addition, there is still one area of the altar I haven't showed you, and that is the Star Palace. This is very important. Once you level up and unlock the Star Palace, this is crucial because it's basically a bunch of buffs. Just, you're gonna see constellations. It's gonna be a little confusing at first, but basically the way this works is that you collect these stones over here, the birth stones for a constellation. When you have collected enough of them, you unlock the constellation. After you have a constellation unlocked, you can start to upgrade it. Now I've upgraded this one all the way to the max. I'll talk about that more in a second. But you use these crystals over here, okay, star source, in order to actually level up your constellation and just get buffs, okay? So it's another way to get buffs. The artifacts give you buffs. The constellations are kind of like artifacts, sort of, okay? It's just a different way of getting buffs. You pick the ones you're most interested in and you level them up. Now you can see here, if I were to level this one up, I would get 1% archer hit points. This particular constellation, by the way, gives infantry attack, infantry hit points, archer hit points, damage increased against infantry, and then last, building speed. Now, when you're doing these upgrades, it will go in order, okay? So first you upgrade, and in this case, infantry attack, then infantry hit points, then archer hit points. So you go in order, you can't change that. And once you level each of them up once, the cost will go up. It starts at 3,000, then 4,000, then 5,000. Um, and you just keep going through those five things. You just go sort of cycle back to the top. So once I have done the upgrade for building speed again, it'll go right back to infantry attack. And you just keep getting more stats, okay? So the way to think about all these is just, it's a way to get more stats. And you may be wondering, okay, so how do I unlock these? And how do I get Star Source to be able to do that? This is where the Star Ruins is really valuable. These Star Ruins are where you're gonna go every single day, and this is so valuable. As soon as you get this building, start doing this, okay? You're gonna go into the Star Ruins. You're gonna go to the first area you have access to, the shallow load, probably level one, and you can start mining. Now, once you are strong enough, you can contest little bosses and you have absolutely no losses by the way when you fight these zero troop loss so there's no reason not to try it out and fight them see if you can beat it and that will give you access further and further along to higher and higher level places where you can go and mine where the speed with which you get rewards is actually higher so you can see here um, i'm getting uh, 50 per hour of the star source and also six per hour of another currency. I'm gonna show this to you in just a minute that meteorite crystals are very important and I'll show you why, okay? So if I just jump back for a second, the way that you're getting your star source for your constellations to level them up, okay, is by mining it. And again, fight the bosses, advance as far as you can. I will point out, however, that things get interesting once you leave what's called these shallow loads. The shallow loads, nobody can attack you. Not a big deal. You just mine away to your heart's content. But once you get to these deep loads, which you will, you can plunder other players, okay? Now, when you plunder somebody, you can take 10% of the resources. If I plunder, they will keep on mining. I get 10% of the, uh, I guess I said resources. What I mean is their star source that they've collected here. So in this case, it's telling me I would get 55 of the 10 star source tokens, okay? 55 of those of those tokens at the, the 10 denomination. Now I have another option here, which is occupy. And if I occupy, I actually, not only do I plunder from them, I kick them out of there and they're back to uh, not mining at all at that exact moment in time. Now, 
I have zero attacks remaining. You get two per day. And I didn't even know you can spend gems to get more attacks if you really wanted to. I don't really want to. And I don't really want to attack someone from my own server because guess what? There are people from other servers in here. Why attack someone from your own realm, which sort of hinders your own realm's progress, when you can attack someone from another realm? I mean, I guess if you're worried about them attacking you, that's maybe a whole nother story. And keep in mind, when you fight somebody, either occupy or plunder, you have zero, actual zero troop loss. You'll get a battle report. It'll show you what happened. But you have zero troop loss. So this is a great way to practice. This is also a very sneaky way if you are attacking somebody from your own realm to see what their stats are and what their best army configuration is. Good to know. Keep that in mind, okay? But once you are doing this, you will start to realize how powerful it is to be making sure that you are gathering every single day and that you plunder when you can from whom you can. You can see their battle power before you, you go and fight them. And you can see on that little signpost off to the side exactly how many of these uh, items I have accumulated from mining, how long I've been mining. But then there's this section right over here. And I told you, I'd tell you about these meteorite crystals. This is where you cash them in. And there are a ton of rewards you can get that are absolutely amazing here. I love this store. It's, it's so good. Because you can go in and get, I mean, what do you need? I picked up the recruitment speedups. I picked up the building speedups. I'm even picking up some resources. I will probably get the Lord experience. I picked up materials. But the most important thing by far is right here. This is it. It is the birthstone chest. Get all of those. Why is that? In each birthstone chest is one of the items you need, one birthstone, to start to unlock a constellation, as I was talking about. Very important. You want to get constellations unlocked. You want to start to level them up and get those buffs. So this is the thing you must go and get every single day. In addition, I, I, this is going to run out. You, you see, I have zero left. The store refreshes every week, okay? You might consider accumulating some amount of extra and holding on to it for the next uh, week to open up, maybe. Depends on your rate of gain. I didn't hold on to any, and I can get a lot of what I want here. Um, I will point out that as your castle gets higher level, you get some better and better options here for what you can claim. I look forward to being able to do that, but I'm not there yet. Um, I will, however, point out one important thing. Every day, you have this star quest. The star quest will change. Initially, I think you just need to challenge a boss to get to the next area of progression. And if you lose, you just need to challenge it. And also, you need to go mine. So every day, you need to collect, go to a new mine, and also challenge a boss. Um, once you get to the further areas, you need to actually try to plunder from somebody every single day. And this is giving you a choice birthstone. This is a pick one. You pick whichever birthstone you want. Very important. Do this every day. And this is a birthstone chest where you get one at random. So those two quests you're going to do every day, that's two birthstones per day. Plus, I, think, I forget how many there were in here. Maybe it's 10 per week that you get from this birthstone chest. Very, very, very important that you do that so that you unlock constellations and you have the um, ability to then go and upgrade these. That's everything you need to know at the start of the game about the altar and the star palace. Now, I will throw in one more thing. It's a little more advanced, okay? Which is that as you start to power stuff up in the star palace, if you look all the way in the upper right, there's a star currency. This is used for a number of things. One of the things that you can use it for, um, in fact, ooh, when I tap it, star power, when increasing the array level, evolving orange artifacts to red artifacts and increasing artifact skill levels, get mysterious powers after upgrading zodiac levels, activating zodiacs. Okay, so you can use these stars. Let me just make it simple. Um, to go in, to your array, and I have done this a couple times, you can upgrade your array. So every time I do an upgrade over here, I just get a percent modifier of all of my artifacts that are here, which is pretty cool. So I'm up to 2% bonus. I'm sure that'll go much higher. And maybe I should save some of these up now so that when I want to evolve this Aegis, um, which is going to take me a while. Okay, I get it. I will have what I need to go and do that. Um, the Aegis is, I mean, it's pretty difficult to obtain this. I've been spending my way to it. I am working on it to three stars. I don't know that this is the best artifact. In fact, it probably isn't. Excalibur is one you get for free, which is pretty solid. Uh, it comes from events, particularly Monster Swarm. Seem to get a lot from there. But um, those star, uh, I, that star currency that I was just telling you about, 
it's used for those main things, okay? You do these upgrades, you also need them to do evolving, um, and there's probably more that I still need to learn about this game, and as I do so, I will make another video about it. So consider subscribing if you learned what you needed to learn about War and Order and how specifically the altar and also uh, the star ruins work. I think the second you can unlock these, you need to start to take advantage of them. I was a little hesitant because I had no clue what was going on. I didn't understand. Um, and there was so much I was learning all at once as I was just starting the game um, that I, I maybe got into that a, a little later than I should have for learning exactly how it works and how valuable it is. So get started right away. And if there's anything else that people need to know, please do me a huge favor and just leave a comment, okay? Leave a comment with the things that people need to know about the altar and the star palace and all these things um, so that they can get the edge they need. Throw a like on here, subscribe, and until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.